In under 10 minutes, you'll be ready to use Redshift Renderer. When we're done, you'll be ready to render cool images like this one. So let's start by installing the renderer on Windows. Go to the website to get the latest from this thread. Get the latest installer. Now that you have the installer, just run it. Next, agree. Here you don't have to change anything. The Houdini plugin will install by default. And if you have the license already, run the licensing tool. Now let's install Redshift for Linux. Go to the new version announcements. Click the latest version thread. Download the Linux installer. Once you have the installer, open a terminal at this location. First we need to make it executable. chmod plus x and the name of the file. Press enter to make it executable. Then we need to type sudo dot forward slash and the name of the file. Press enter. Type your password. Here you need to read the license. Type accept to accept the license. Then press enter to install in the default location. There you go. That's all for the installation. Now let's activate it. Go to your home folder and find the Houdini version that you're using. Find this houdini.env file. Open it with any text editor. In my case, it's Sublime Text. If you go back to the website, there is a documentation link. Click in the Linux or Windows plugin installation. Copy these three lines. Paste them at the bottom. Make sure you change this to your Houdini version. In my case, it's 565. Once that is done, you can save this and close it. And you'll have Redshift for Houdini ready for rendering. Okay, now in Houdini, you have this amazing plugin installed. And there is a menu that will confirm that it is installed. There is also a shelf. Click here in the plus sign. Shelves and select the Redshift shelf. And you can see there's a lot of functions from Redshift here. You can create render node from here. There you go. I need to have a camera. Once I have the position I want in the viewport, I can just go here and create a new camera. Now to create a light, do something similar. Move the viewport to the position where the light will be. And then control click on the light icon here on the shelf. That will create the light pointing in that direction. If we move the viewport, you can see the light we just created. On the light tab parameters, you can see the light type is a distant light. You can change this to a point light, to a spotlight, and to an area light. What I want for this is an area light. In the shader tab is where you change the color and the intensity. Let's change the intensity to 5 because it's too high right now. Make the area size bigger and move it closer. Let's change the color as well. I like to use this temperature slider, make it a little bit yellow. We already have a render node that we created by using the shell button, so we can start rendering to see how it looks already. Let's switch to the render view, select our camera and click the render button. Redshift starts rendering. You can see that really quickly, we have a very nice looking scene. We're using progressive rendering, which will keep rendering until you stop it. I will turn it off for now in the IPR tab to clearly see what's happening. Render again. Now you can see the render is grainy. There's a lot of grain in the shadows and in the direct illumination. Shift drag to render just a section. Go to the light and change the samples to 256. And you can see all the shadow noise and direct specular is gone. If you still see some noise, you can make it higher, like 512. Now all that noise is gone just by giving it more samples. You can see in this side is very noisy. These chocolates already have a texture, but I'm going to show you how to create a material. Switch to the shop's context in Houdini. There is a new redshift section. Let's create an RS material. The material has a bunch of cool useful presets. Let's apply the shader to the chocolates. Select them, material tab, select it from this list. That's the default shader. Looks really nice. You can select another preset like glass. And we have glass chocolates now. Try the different presets. You can also just change the color directly. Just progressive rendering when tweaking parameters to have faster feedback. You can see the color changes instantly. 
The feedback is pretty amazing. You can see the specular is really sharp. The reflection section is responsible for that. If you don't want any reflections, just put the weight to zero. If you want blurry reflections, increase the roughness. If you put it all the way up, it will be like a Lambert shader. Same thing applies for reflections. If you give it more samples, the reflection noise will clear up. Assign the chocolate shader again. Another tool you can use to make this scene more realistic is global illumination. Select the redshift node, then the redshift tab, then global illumination tab. For the primary GI engine, activate brute force. Render again. Now we're getting a lot more light in the dark areas. Let's focus on this area. To clear the noise, we need to raise the brute force GI rays, just like we did with the area light samples. You can see the noise clears up. Now we're going to add depth of field to this image. Select the camera and click the Camp Arms button on the shelf. That adds this tab here in the camera properties. Now if we see the camera in the viewport and in the handle, you can activate the focus handle. This way we can set exactly where the focus will be. This square marks the area in focus. And these arrows controls the f-stop. So put that where the shuckles are. Now activate it in the Redshift Camera tab, DOF, and check Enable. Render again. Now you can see these areas at the top and the bottom will be out of focus. You can use the power parameter if you want to make it even more blurry. I also like to activate photographic exposure. That helps to give it a bit more realism. Here we can add vignetting. If we make this value really high, you can see what the effect is doing. This helps lead the eye to the center. You don't need to make this harsh. For me, that looks pretty nice. You can also modify the ISO and shutter time here if you know what you're doing. Another thing I like to do is crush the blacks a little bit. That gives it that contrast that I like. Let's focus on an area again. You can see the depth of field is a bit noisy. To clear that up, we need to use the max samples located in redshift setting sampling. Unified samples applies to the whole scene. Let's make this 128. Okay, let's compare this with the previous render. You can see the noise clears up really nice. That's pretty cool. This scene is looking really nice already. We can make it look better if we add more lights. We can copy this light we already have. The light is on top of the other one. To place the light, we can go to this camera menu and look through that light and now we can just lock this view and put the light where we want it. Make a third one and position it on top. Make this even larger so it's softer. With our light setup done, let's do our final render. So there you go. In a few minutes and a few lights, we have an amazing looking image rendered directly from Redshift. Thanks a lot and I hope you enjoy this.